With free coal delivered regularly, the cast iron cooking ranges of miners' houses burned night and day to feed the hungry working men returning from their shifts at the pit. The range provided heat for the house and hot water so the miners could wash off all the coal dust when they returned home from work in a tin bath in front of the fire. The mines never stopped working and so every miner worked one of three eight-hour shifts in the day, the morning, afternoon or night. If different men in the house worked different shifts, they would come home tired, dirty and hungry at different times of the day or night and the lady of the house would have to make sure their tea was ready and there was hot water for the bath. Miners were famous for growing their own food in allotments or gardens, vegetables, fruits and livestock. It was not unusual to keep chickens, rabbits or pigs which would be killed and then eaten. By growing their own food the families saved money and ate well. To encourage themselves they had clubs and competitions to see who could grow the straightest carrot or the fattest cabbage. To this day there are still leek growing competitions in mining areas, especially in County Durham and Northumberland, where vegetable growers try to grow the biggest leek and receive a cash prize. On weekends and holidays, miners enjoyed themselves. A reward for their dirty and dangerous work. They might simply go for a walk in the countryside, or maybe go fishing or catching rabbits. Every village had its miners' welfare hall, where all sorts of activities went on. Here you could play table tennis, snooker or darts, dominoes, cards or chess. Many mining villages would have a park, where sports like bowling and tennis could be played. Miners loved to enjoy the fresh air and freedom to move around and exercise. Not surprising when you might spend your working days lying down in the dark in a cramped space, hacking coal off a wall with a pick. Children growing up in an industrial landscape had interesting opportunities for play. Of course there were swings and slides on the recreation ground, but for sheer thrills nothing could beat wearing your trousers out, sliding down a slag heap or playing on abandoned railway equipment. But young people had to enjoy their pleasures while they could. Most boys in a mining village could expect to go down the pit themselves and at an early age. 100 years ago boys started work in mines at the age of 14 or 15. Childhood was very short. Pigeon racing was incredibly popular amongst pitmen. In allotments and gardens they would build the crees where their pigeons lived and give them all the food and attention they needed. Pigeons have the knack of being able to find their way home from hundreds, even thousands of miles away and this is the basis of pigeon racing. Pigeon fanciers, as they are known, would form a club. On a race day all the birds were loaded into wicker baskets and driven many miles away on a truck. Then they would be released and all the birds would start making for home where their owners waited for them in anticipation because the owner of the bird that got home first would receive a cash prize. In the old days, 
People didn't go to places like Spain for holidays on an aeroplane. Instead, they got on the train and went to the seaside to stay in a hotel or bed and breakfast for a week. In the northeast of England, the famous seaside resorts were Seton Carew, South Shields, Whitley Bay and Saltburn. Or maybe you could go a little further to places like Blackpool or Scarborough for a week of lazy days on the beach, paddling in the waves, riding donkeys on the sands, having a picnic and maybe watching a Punch and Judy show. One of the highlights of every miner's year was the famous Durham Big Meeting, which still happens today. Miners and their families from all over the region would arrive in buses and coaches from all the different mining communities with their brass band instruments, the banner of their mine, and of course picnics and packed lunches. There was a procession of dozens of bands through the city up to the cathedral. This was how the miners showed their solidarity to the world. Away. Poor Durham is stopping off, me lads, upon big meeting day. The bandsmen all assemble with their horns so blind and bright, and they blaspheme in the morning. morning.